now i am going to dictate a legal passage at the rate of 120 words per minute 5 4 3 2 1 Let's start. Further, it appears to me that the royal prerogative, where it deals with substantive rights of the crown as against its subjects, as for example, the priority of crown dates over dates of the same nature, owing to the subject, stands on a different footing from the royal prerogative put forward in the present case, which is really no more than a rule of construction of. statutes passed by parliament where for example a royal prerogative dealing with a substantive right has been accepted by the courts in india as applicable here also it becomes a law in force which will continue in force under article 372 within bracket 1 of the constitution era where the royal prerogative is merely a rule of construction of statutes based on the existing of the crown in england and for historical reasons i fail to see why in a democratic republic the courts should not follow the ordinary principle of construction that no one is exempt from the operation of a statute unless the statute expressly grants the exemption or the exemption arises by necessary implication on the whole therefore I I am of the opinion that the proper rule of construction which should now be applied at any rate after January 26 1950 is that the state in India whether in the center or in the states is bound by the law unless there is an express exemption in favor of the state or an exemption can be in part by necessary implication the view taken by the Calcutta High court in this connection should be accepted and the view expressed by the privy council in province of bombay versus municipal corporation of the city of bombay within bracket one should no longer be accepted as the rule for construction of statutes passed by indian legislature stop here let me then come to the question whether on the view i have taken of the rule of construction and the prosecution in this case can be allowed to continue there is nothing in the act of 1923 or in the act of 1951 exempting the state specifically from any of the provisions of the calcutta municipal act in this case the state is being prosecuted under section 488 within bracket or section 537 now and that section provides for fine for breach of of section 386 within bracket or section 437 now the is a penal provision and immediately a question arises whether the state as such apart from its individual officers as a natural persons is liable to prosecution under the criminal law or has to be exempted from the operation of the provisions of criminal statutes by necessary implication a criminal proceeding generally ends with punishment which may be imprisonment or fine or both now it does not require any elaborate reason to realize that the state as such cannot be sentenced to imprisonment because there is no way up within bracket 1 within bracket 1946 lr 73 ia 271 stop pair keeping it in a prison therefore by necessary implication the state is exempt from all penal statutes and provisions of providing for sentences of imprisonment or death then come those penal provisions which impose fines like the present case and the question is whether in such a case also the state must be deemed by necessary implication to be exempt from the penal provision generally speaking fines when inflicted by courts are realized by the state 
and go to the coffers of the state in effect therefore if the state as such is to be prosecuted under a penal statute imposing fine the result is that the court will sentence the state to fine which will go to the state itself it is obvious that stop thank you